how do I find epic camping spots like the one behind me? Stay with me and I'll show you how. First, it starts out with what everybody has, a smartphone, most people at least these days. Um, I'll go into my smartphone and I'll go to my, my go-to app, which is freecampsites.net. And as you can see, if I enter in my location, Valley of Fire, I come up with this picture. And as you can see, you can see the two blue dot, blue uh, little tent deals there on the right by the by the the water there. And I click on the one, Stewart's Point, Lake Mead National Recreation Area, Overton, Nevada. And it's even got a rating on there, uh, three and a half stars. I think that's low, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, if I click on it again, you see this picture, which is uh, the data on it. You have your, your GPS coordinates, your elevation. You can even, it'll even sync with your mapping software, Google Maps, and uh, you can go through it that way for directions and uh, navigation. It'll tell you the amenities. You know what you have there uh, how many days you can camp there if it's pay if it's free who manages it and if we go to the next page it'll you'll see the permit information when, and, and this is kind of deceiving this so 20 20 dollars for seven days 40 dollars for a year that's just the lake mead national recreation area that includes nothing else but if you have a national parks pass the National Parks Pass covers this. So it would make no sense to get that pass if you have a National Parks Pass. But if you live close to the area and you don't plan on going to any national parks, it might be a good deal for you. Now it'll even give you the forecast here, which is kind of nice. So you know what the weather's going to be like and the temperatures before you even go there. And as you can see in this picture, it'll, it'll give you the cell phone reception you're going to receive in the area. And... Uh, uh, this is user populated, so they, they comes from actual reviews, and you'll see the pictures there too. People can leave pictures with their reviews, and to kind of give you an idea of the lay of the land and what it looks like. And there's also reviews. Now, the re reviews on any of these apps are very important. Um, you want to look at the most current review, and then look at all the reviews and, and see what the general consensus is. Uh, you're going to get a good feel for if it's a place you want to go or not. Don't go by one review that rates it a zero or a one. I mean, it's, it, it, that, those aren't reliable. Go, go by the totality of the reviews. Um, they're usually pretty accurate. But uh, next, I go to iOverland. And as you can see, it's a little different format, but basically the same principle. I go into the map and scroll over to where I want to camp or, you know, search for that particular area or that city. And it's going to give me a different, uh, a, a little different layout. They kind of overlap. Uh, free campsites that, that and I overland. A little bit they overlap but there's some different things in each one so you might find stuff on iOverland you won't find on freecampsites.net so it's a good good to check both of them now if I'm traveling in the southeast United States I use an app and it's a pay service called boondockers welcome um, 
I'm not sure if the app is available to you yet. I'm, I'm actually a beta tester. It is available. You can go to their website, boondockerswelcome.com, and look at it through there and make reservations on your site through that, on their site through that. Uh, it does cost $50 a year. But if you're going to full-timing and you're traveling the southeast United States or on the East Coast, it's indispensable. For $50, all your camping's covered. Some places offer you water, electricity. Some even have sewer hookups or sewer dumps. Um, it's just amazing. The, everybody I've met at them are very, very kind people. I've not had a problem at one of them. I've been invited into their homes, fed meals, sat on their porches and had great conversations. I can't say enough about the people on Boondockers Welcome. Uh, again, it is a pay site, $50. I stayed at approximately six different locations while in the southeast this year, or this last year, traveling, last fall. And so six locations into $50, that's <laughs> hell of a deal, less than $10 a camping spot. Where are you going to find that? And I had electric at some of them and ran my air conditioning because I was there in October. Uh, some of them uh, will request a fee or a donation towards electric or water, you know, $5, $10, nothing major, but well worth it if, if, you're, if you have to have that. Uh, now, when I'm traveling between campsites or cities or, or, or uh, different parks, and it's just a travel day and I just need an overnight, I'll stay at truck stops, rest areas. I even, the video, three videos ago, I stayed at uh, just a BLM pull-off uh, 25 miles southeast of Vegas. And that actually you could spend some time there easily. It's very nice, very secluded, beautiful area comfortable but i use i use free campsites dot, dot net to find that one and that was uh very acceptable um if you're traveling and you <laughs> you know the, the the rest areas can be a great place i i like those better than i like some of the truck stops or cracker barrels and i tend to sleep better <laughs> Because there's fewer people on the road later at night, so you get a lot less traffic. When you're in a city or at a Cracker Barrel, there's people going in and out until 8, 10 o'clock at night. And then they're there right away in the morning. So sleeping is kind of hard to do. And the Cracker Barrels are usually right off the interstate, so you get traffic noise. Um, same with Walmarts. I'm not really a big fan of staying in a Walmart, especially nowadays. Uh, it's hard when they have no parking signs up at all of them, it's hard to determine which ones actually enforce that, which ones don't. I know some people say, hey, you don't know what you're talking about, but I drive truck and, and seen some bad experiences and I don't want to <laughs> have one, a bad experience. So, uh, Another app I use in my travels is AirMap. Um, I like to fly my drones and I need to know if it's legal to fly before I go there. A lot of times if I'm planning on flying the drone. So here I cannot fly the drone. I'm in the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. It's the same as a national park. You cannot fly a drone legally here. The park rangers cannot legally fly a drone here. They don't even use them for search and rescue. Outside agencies may, but <laughs> they're not supposed to either. So I'll look at that, like the last, the, the campsite that was 25 miles southeast of Las Vegas. It was great. I got to fly my drone there. I was outside the Lake Mead Recreation Area. And I was between no-fly zones for airports and everything else. So I had, I had a little area there that I could fly. It just happened to come about. And I got to do that great uh, follow-me shot when uh, I was leaving the campsite. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope to get more of that later on down the road here but uh, if you have any questions about that feel free to make a comment make sure to like share and subscribe and if you want to see more of this let me know I'm going to show you more of my campsites as I travel and uh, head head uh, east now so I hope you all enjoy your day thank you very much